I'm so excited to start a new sermon series this morning on Paul's letters to the Thessalonians entitled Final Rescue. The letters of Paul to the Thessalonians addresses concerns about the end times, about the return of Jesus, the day of the Lord, the arrival of the man of lawlessness or the Antichrist, and several other issues. But of course, um, the book of uh, Thessalonians does not only cover end times, no? It covers also other issues that are relevant not only to the Thessalonians, but also to us. So we're going to unpack the, the letters of Paul for the next several weeks so that we can find out what is God's message for our church. Okay, so by way of background, the Thessalonians, by the way, they are the people living in Thessalonica. Thessalonica is the present-day Salonica or Thessaloniki that's located in Greece. Thessalonica was founded in uh, 315 BC by Cassander, the king of Macedonia. He named the city after his wife, Thessalonica, the sister of Alexander the Great. This is the map of the area during that time. So this is a closer look of the map. So we can see Macedonia and then Thessalonica in the middle, no? and then uh, Philippi, Corinth, so lower portion, and then Athens. So, yon. So by way of background, the Macedonia used to be a kingdom, but uh, Rome um, expanded their influence Rome conquered uh, the kingdom of Macedonia, and then uh, Thessalonica became the capital and the largest city in the Roman Macedonia in the second century AD. Thessalonica, if you notice, uh, it's uh, near the sea. It has the, one of the biggest seaport during that time. Uh, it's a very important place together with Corinth, Philippi, uh, and Ephesus. Okay, During that time, the population of Macedonia is around 200,000 people. Thessalonica was one of the top 10 cities in the ancient Roman Empire. Most of the people living there were Greeks, but there were some Romans. Now, Thessalonica became a free city under the Roman Empire. So in background, just so that you will appreciate, uh, what happened is that uh, Julius Caesar was assassinated by Cassius and uh, Brutus. Then the side of the Romans, like see Mark Anthony and Octavian, who happens to be the nephew of Julius Caesar, so they fought against Cassius and Brutus. And the battle took place um, somewhere in northern Greece. No? And then the Philippians, they allied with Cassius and Brutus, whereas the Th Thessalonians, and Thessalonians, rather, they allied with um, Mark Anthony and Octavian. And then eventually, Mark Anthony prevailed. They won the battle. As a reward, Thessalonica became a free city. Meaning free city, meaning uh, there were no military occupation in that place. They were given freedom, autonomy. They were given the right to mint their own coins. And, you know, they enjoyed a lot of autonomy. But still, they are under the rule of the Romans. And the Romans allowed the Thessalonians to establish imperial cults. Now, imperial cults, I think, worship because they worship the emperor, Emperor uh, Caesar. No? They, um, they worship Caesar. So, they allow the mga Thessalonians to establish this temple in honor of Caesar. By the way, not anyone can uh, establish those imperial cults. That, dapat may, na ay permission. There should be a permission from Rome. And during that time, the Thessalonians worship a lot of gods. Uh, there were around 25 deities or gods being worshipped by the Thessalonians. They worship um, the god Dionysius, uh, the Egyptian gods Serapis, Isis, Anubis, and then they also worship Aphrodite, ito, Venus, uh, goddess of love. So they have lots of gods and goddesses. And aside from that, there is also Judaism. And, and uh, 
Eventually, Paul went there to preach the gospel. So just imagine the gospel was competing with a lot of religion there in uh, Thessalonica. So before we study on the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians, we have to know what is the background. So how did the gospel reach the Thessalonians? So by way of background, let's look at the book of Acts, chapter 17, verse 1 to 10. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul went in, as was his custom, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and rise from the dead, and saying, This Jesus, whom I proclaim to you, is the Christ. So, Paul visited Thessalonica during his second missionary journey. So, he went there to the synagogue, uh, because during that time, anyone, if you're above 18, anyone can speak in the synagogue. So, Paul was given a chance. Remember, Paul was under Gamaliel. No? Gamaliel was a respected teacher. So, the Jews welcomed him. Na, okay, you preach in the synagogue. And Paul took the opportunity to preach about Jesus Christ. So, he uh, explained from the Old Testament, telling the Jews there that Jesus was the one uh, who is the Messiah, who had to suffer, he died, and he was resurrected from the dead. So probably, Paul was uh, preaching on the book of Psalm, Psalm 2, Psalm 110, and Isaiah 53. So it is written here that Paul preached on three Sabbath days. But there are evidence that Paul stayed longer in Thessalonica. He stayed longer in Thessalonica uh, that is why um, if you look at uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 15 to 16, Paul narrated the Philippians sent him help while he was in Thessalonica. Okay, so Paul stayed there for longer than three Sabbath days. That is why Paul had developed a relationship with the Thessalonians. Okay, let's go to verse 4. And some of them, some of the Jews, no, and uh, the uh, Gentiles in Thessalonica, they were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas as did a great number of devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women. So if you notice, the Bible did not say that Paul persuaded them. But the Bible says that they were persuaded by the preaching of Paul. So in other words, God was behind, no? God was behind uh, all of this, that is why a number of Jews converted and a, a number of Gentiles also became Christians. Okay? And then in verse 5, but the Jews, mga Hudyo, they were jealous. Nagselos sila. And they took some wicked men of the rabble and they formed a mob and set the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason seeking to bring them out of the crowd. So these people, they were looking for Paul and Silas. Okay, let's go to verse 6. And when they could not find Paul and Silas, they dragged Jason. Jason is a Thessalonian. No? He, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers, meaning the Christians, before the city authorities, leaders nila, shouting, These men who have turned the world upside down have come here also. And Jason has received them, and they were all acting against the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, Jesus. And the people and the city authorities were disturbed when they heard these things. So we can see that the Jews brought two political charges against Paul and Silas. And first charge is that Paul and Silas were disturbing the peace. Remember, uh, Thessalonica uh, was given the free city status by Rome. So they were disturbed because they don't want to disturb the peace. Otherwise, the Romans might get angry and might revoke their free city status. And also, they charged Paul and Silas of treason for violating the decrees of Caesar. Remember, during that time, they uh, have high esteem to the emperor. 
That's why they also worship the emperor as their god. And now, Paul was preaching that Jesus is the king, the Messiah, and he is God. So the city authorities were threatened. They were afraid that the Romans might find out that there is such a teaching and, the, and Rome might be alarmed that there would be another king that will come and who displace Caesar. So that is why itong mga city authorities, itong mga leaders ng Thessalonica, they were worried. They were worried. That is why they arrested no? Paul and Silas. And then verse 9, And when they had taken money as security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. In other words, what do you mean by this money? This is not bribe. So, kubaga, they required Jason to post bond, security bond, that in case Paul and Silas will come again to the city, they will forfeit that bond. So, they asked Jason to give a promise not to let Paul and Silas come back to them. And then verse 10, the brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas um, by night to Berea. And when they arrived at Berea, they went into the Jewish synagogue. But that does not stop the Thessalonians. Because while Paul was in Berea, he preached the gospel, and then a lot of people were converted. And then the Thessalonians, uh, they went to Berea to drive Paul and Silas out. So eventually, Paul went to Athens, leaving behind Silas and Timothy. And then, syempre, they will remember, Paul and Silas established a church in Thessalonica, but they are away. So what, what Paul did, he sent uh, Timothy to Thessalonica to find out how are they doing. And Tim Timothy came back with a good report. Good report uh, saying that the Thessalonians have uh, genuine faith. And at the same time, Timothy told uh, Paul of the concerns of the Thessalonians, especially on end times. And because of that, since Paul cannot go to Thessalonica to teach them, what he did, he wrote the first letter to the Thessalonians. So that is why we have this letter. Kasi may mga concerns ang mga Thessalonians that Paul cannot address since he was banned from coming back to the city. So 1 Thessalonians was written by Paul while he was in the city of Corinth, okay, around AD 50 to 51. Uh, the first letter to the Thessalonians is uh, considered... Uh, According to scholars, second letter of Paul. The first one is the letter to the Galatians. Okay, so now we know the background. So let's go to the text. No? So let's go to verse 1. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace. Ako si Pablo, uban ni Silas o ni Timoteo, nang umusta kaninyo mga tumutuo diha sa Thessalonica. Kamo nga Anaa sa Diyos nga amahan o kang ginoong Heso Kristo. Hinaot nga, madawat ninyo ang grasya o ang kalinaw. During those times, their letters have three parts in their opening. No? So first, there's a name of the sender. Second, the name of the recipient, kung kinsa mo dawat sa letter. And third is the greetings. But nowadays, if you notice, our, the name of the sender is written at the end, no? Lovingly yours or very truly yours, the name. But sa panahon nila, nauna ang pangalan. That is why Paul wrote, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. So the primary author of this book is Paul. And he is joined by Silvanus and Timothy. Probably Silvanus and Timothy were involved, but it also adds um, weight and authority to, to Paul's letter. Kasi remember, the Thessalonians know these three people because these three people used to be with them. So... So, sila ang author ng letter. And uh, by the way, who is Silvanus? Uh, we already know Paul kasi he's the, he used to be Saul of Tarsus. He, he was the prosecutor of the, of the church, but he was transformed on the way to Damascus when the Lord appeared to him. And then si Silvanus, in other translation, Silas. Silas ang pangalan niya, Silvanus in uh, Roman name niya. Silvanus is the companion of, uh, of Paul. He's a colleague, parang same level sila ni uh, Paul, and Silvanus uh, was the leader of the Jerusalem church. So he is a prominent Christian also. No? And then Timothy, Timothy parang underling or a, a disciple of Paul. He's a young man who, who was led by Paul to faith in Christ. 
if you look in the Bible, there is letter to First Timothy, first letter to Timothy, second letter to Timothy, Timothy, yun yun si Timothy. So that's the person. Um, si Timothy served as the special assistant of Paul, and sometimes he served as an emissary to churches. No, So Paul considered Timothy as his spiritual son. Okay, so the, the recipient of the letter is the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. So the word church here, okay, the word used in Greek is ecclesia. Ecclesia. So, uh, sa Tagalog, diba? Iglesia. No? The Greek word behind Ecclesia, or the church, uh, church, the Ecclesia is defined as a regularly summoned legislative body or assembly, or a gathering of people. So, uh, traditionally, in the Septuagint, Septuagint is the Greek uh, translation of the Hebrew Bible, the Ecclesia was being referred to the Israelites, no? the God's covenant people. But now, Paul was referring to the Christians as the church. Before, it's the Israelites. No, so, this is uh, interesting. You know why? Kasi, ang mga Thessalonians, these are Gentiles. No? Kasi, ang ecclesia, this is the word being used to describe the Jews. No? But karon, the Gentiles became God's covenant people through faith in Jesus Christ. And then the word church, uh, it refers to a local community of uh, Christian, pwedeng local church. So technically, ang church, dilit na siya isang institution, it's not a religion, it's the Christians, the assembly of Christians. We are the church, we are the local church, okay? And then, um, so that is the audience, no? The church, the local church, the local Thessalonian church. And then a grace and peace, grace to you and peace. You all know that peace, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. So it refers to favor, prosperity, well-being. Parang bless you, uh, hope that you will have favor. And then grace to you, grace is the unmerited favor of God no, to us sinners. And then from uh, verses 2 to 10, that is the coverage of our preaching for this morning, uh, this, this contains the thanksgiving of Paul. Okay, so what, I, what was Paul being thankful for? Okay, let's go to verse 2. We give thanks to God always for all of you, constantly mentioning you in our prayers. Kanunay kaming nagapasalama sa Diyos tungod kaninyong tanan o kanunay usab namo kamong gihinumduman sa among mga pagampo. Remember, Paul had close relationship with the Thessalonians. But after they were banned from coming back, so Paul was always praying for these new believers. Itong mga Thessalonians, these are new converts, mga baby Christians pa. So Paul uh, continued to remember them and continued to mention the Thessalonians in his prayer. And in verse 3, sabi niya, Remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi ni Saya, nagapasalamat kami kaniya kay nahinumduman namo ang inyong ginahimo nga maayo tungod sa inyong pagtuo kaniya. Ang inyong maabtikon nga pagtabang sa uban tungod sa inyong gugma ug ang inyong mapinadayonon nga pagpangalagad tungod sa inyong hugot nga pagsalig nga si Hesus Kristo nga atong ginuo mubalik kining tanan gibuhat ninyo sa atubangan sa Dios nga atong amahan so if you notice atong three virtues no Paul mentioned about the Thessalonians work of faith labor of love and steadfastness of hope so in other words these are the three cardinal virtues of the Thessalonians faith love and hope no, amazing, diba? Faith, love, and hope. These Thessalonians possess all of them. Okay, let's go one by one. Unsay pasabot ni Paul sa work of faith. The work of faith, meaning the object of faith of the Thessalonians is God. Okay, nasile pagtuo sa ginoo. And their faith produces work, works, no? According to Paul, salvation is by faith and not by works. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 to 9. 
So ang faith, kung naipagtuo sa katao, magawas ang prutas, no? magawas ang yang good works. The work is the result of faith. Their work shows that they have faith. Okay? The work is the evidence of their faith. So, we are saved by faith, not by works. Christianity is the only religion that uh, teaches that we are saved, not by our own, but by God's grace, no? by faith. Because all other religion teaches um, that we can only be saved by doing good works. We have to do good works, and then after we die, uh, timbangon, if you have more good works than bad deeds, then you'll be saved. But Christian is different. The Bible teaches that all of us deserve to die. Nobody is righteous. So the only way na maluwas ta is magtuo ta. We believe by faith in Jesus Christ, His Son, no? God's Son. And then, by faith. And then, the problem is, we cannot just say, okay, na ako'y pagtuo. That's not enough. Dapat makita sa inyong binuhatan ang nanagod may pagtuo. Because anyone can claim that he is a Christian. So, yung mga sinner's prayer, they cannot save you. Let's say, you say that you have faith, pero dili makita sa inyong binuhatan. Diba? Even James said that if you claim that you have faith but do not have work, then your faith is dead. So, your faith must translate to works. Dapat makita na sa inyong binuhatan na kamo Kristuhanon. So, if you claim to be a Christian but continue to to disobey God, live a lifestyle of sin, so that's questionable. So, brothers and sisters, we have to show, no? we have to yield good fruit. That is how we will know that we are saved. So, what are these good works? could be anything. It could be uh, helping the poor, could be uh, loving other people, comforting the depressed, and anything, no? any, any good works. No? Dapat makita sa atong kinabuhi na nagitay pagtuo. And ikaduha, labor of love. Unsa man labor of love? Okay, the object of the love of the Thessalonians are their fellow believers. They love their fellow believers and then they serve them. They love them, they serve them. Kasi remember, the greatest two commandments in the Bible is that first, we have to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And the second is that we have to love our neighbors as ourselves. So sinasabi ni Paul, these Thessalonians, they love their fellow believers. They serve them. They help them out. They help each other. Okay? Love is also an evidence of salvation. You will know that you were saved if you could love other people. Because um, we are taught in the Bible that... Uh, we have to love one another. Because if we claim that we love God but do not love our brothers, we are deceiving ourselves. Diba sabi ni Jesus? Dapat makita na natin gugma sa atong mga fellow believers. Okay? We have to love other people. And ito yung sabi na labor of love. Naane sa mga Thessalonians. And katalo, steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. What do you mean by this steadfastness? Ang steadfastness mean firm hope. Na ay Paglaom, hope. Another word for steadfastness is endurance. And, and what do you mean by endurance? Ang endurance, ka makaagwanta ka. You can endure trials, sufferings, persecution, hardship, etc. So this hope, no? the Christians have this blessed hope. They confidently uh, expect Jesus to come. So they're hoping that Jesus will come. You know, mas dali na ito maantos ang mga kalisod kung we have this hope. no? We hope that Jesus will come back and He's going to rescue us. We know that life on earth is temporary. So, so carry lang, no? Bisad unsa kalisod, no? All the trials that we, we can continue on because we have that steadfastness of hope. So all of these three virtues na ang Thessalonians. Work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope. That is also the challenge for us this morning. We, as Christians, should have these three Dapat makita sa atong uh, binuhatan na kita luwas. We should uh, do good works because it will show that we are saved. And then we have to love one another. And thirdly, we must have hope. That is why Christians should always be hopeful. Dapat dili depressed. Because if you are depressed, 
Meaning, you don't have that hope. So you have to ask the Lord to give you that hope. We have to be cheerful because we know, even despite this pandemic, no, we know that God has a purpose for this. No? We have this hope, so we look forward to Him. Unlike other people, no? we heard in the news that some people commit suicide because of this pandemic. Wala sila paglaong, wala sila hope. But Christians are different. We have hope. And our hope is anchored in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, verse 4. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that He has chosen you. So, Paul referred the Thessalonians, who happens to be Gentile, as his brothers. The word uh, brothers in Greek is Adelphoi. Remember, Paul was a Pharisee. As a Pharisee, alam mo yung mga Pharisee, they look down on Gentiles. Gentiles are those people who are not Jews. They look down on these people. But the Lord has changed Paul. Karon, he considered these Thessalonians, who are Gentiles, to be his brothers, parang equal in the eyes of God. And then sabi niya, God has chosen you, Gentiles. God has chosen you, Thessalonians. What do you mean by this one, chosen? Etong chosen, the Greek word for chosen is eklogy. That is where we get the English word election. So election and chosen. So we have this doctrine of election. What do you mean by that? Doctrine of election, meaning God has already predestined or chosen whom He will save. Even before we were born, kabalo na siya, kinsa yang maluwas. And is there a biblical basis for that? Yes. You can find that in John 15, 16. Sabi ni Lord, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him. Now, there's a problem here because some people think the halaka. So this is divine sovereignty. So paano kung wala ako gipili sa Diyos? Does it mean that I'm doomed to go to hell? So does it mean that we don't have to do anything? Well, the Bible also teaches human responsibility. You can find that in the Bible also in John 3, Roman 5. So nami po mga passages. That is why itong doctrine of divine sovereignty and human responsibility, the kind of debates among scholars, ane. that's why we have Calvinism, and then we have also Ar- Arminism. So, uh, these people are debating. But I think, um, there's a role, no? There's also divine sovereignty, pero meron ding human responsibility. We have to respond to God's grace. Okay? So, the Lord cannot force us to love Him. Because love will not be love, it is forced. Tama? Yung mga husband dito, mga wife. So of course, you don't want your husband, you don't want to force your husband or your wife to love you. Gusto ni mo, voluntary. The same is true. God, by His grace, no? He wants us to voluntarily come to Him. So, although there is divine sovereignty, there's also human responsibility. Okay, let's go to verse 5. Because our gospel came to you not only in word, na sairan namo kini tungod kay gidawat ninyo ang maayong balita nga among gitudlo gidawat ninyo kini dili lang tungod kay gisulti namo what do you mean by our gospel what what gospel uh, was paul preaching it's the gospel of jesus christ it's the gospel that we know what is the gospel we are all sinners we are doomed to die we have no hope but because of god's love he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins so that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. So, ito yung gospel. Ito yung gospel na preach ni Paul sa mga Thessalonians. And then, ito mga Thessalonians, naminaw sila, okay? And they believe not because of the word of Paul, no? Not only because of the word of Paul. By the way, uh, during those ancient days, uh, mga Greek, daghan ki mga teachers and philosophers, they would travel around, no? Preach. And usually they preach because of money. And I think uh, the same is true. Nowadays, there are preachers also preach for money. But here, Paul was not preaching for money. He was preaching the word of God. And then, sabi niya, uh, we preach the gospel to you also in power, in the Holy Spirit, and with full conviction. What do you mean by that? 
So, yung message ni Paul is not about his eloquence, ability. Ang ipang-preach ni Paul, dili ang iyang nahibawan. Pero ang gi-preach niya, na ay kauban o power in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction. You know, no matter how good the preacher is, but if the Holy Spirit is not working, the preaching would be empty. Wala. Because at the end of the day, preachers are just God's instrument. Ang talagang mag-convict sa kasing-kasing ng mga tao, ang Espiritu Santo, is the Spirit, Holy Spirit, who will convince the hearers that this is the Word of God. It is the Holy Spirit which will touch the heart of the people. That is why, whenever, if you notice, when, every time I preach, I always ask for the Holy Spirit that He will be the one to touch us, that He will be the one to convict us, because it is only the Holy Spirit that who can change us. Okay? So, so in other words, ito mga Thessalonians, they took the word preached by Paul as God's word. So it's through divine or supernatural work of God that they were converted. Let's continue. And you know what kind of men we prove to be among you for your sake. So Paul was saying, okay, I preach to you, but look at our lives. You know that we are sincere. You know, it's important also, yung preacher, no? The integrity of the preacher and the life of the preacher is important. Kasi, you know, when people see a preacher preach morality, Pero ang preacher immoral, walay mutuo. Nobody would follow because they will be turned off. Why is he not practicing what he preaches? Whereas Paul, no? Paul, Silas, they showed by their example that what they're preaching is true. And because of that, the Thessalonians were attracted to the gospel. So I think it's also important, kita mga Christians, no? how we live our life. Because we are God's representative on earth. Kasi kung magsangyaw ta, and then makita ng tao na, na we don't practice what we preach, ma-turn off sila. No? So, please be careful, my brothers and sisters. No? Um, look at our life. Are we living a life that is glorifying to the Lord? Okay, let's go to verse 6. And you, referring to the Thessalonians, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. So, so because of that gospel, pag preach ni Pablo sa ilaha, they imitate us, meaning they imitated Paul, Silas, and Timothy. So, importante yung mga leaders, no, as uh, give uh, good example so that yung mga members mo sunod. That's why it's a challenge, church. Kita mga leaders, mga council members, mga Bible study leaders, we have to live exemplary lives. Kasi kung atong batasan, Dili nindot, ma turn off. Ang uban mga baby Christians, especially, they will be turned off. That's why, because of the life of Paul and Silas, the Thessalonians imitated them. Not only them, but also of the Lord. Kasi the most important model that we have is Jesus Christ. Kasi the problem with some people, they idolize their preacher or pastor to the point that um, if these pastors fall, Sin, they turn away from the Lord. That is why we should not look at men. Kasi pare pares na ta. Although we preachers are required to live exemplary lives, but ultimately, our model should be Jesus Christ. No? Kasi, kasi itong mga pastors, mga pare, we, we, we hear in the news, no? they commit immorality, adultery, etc. We don't mind them because they are sinners. We look at the Lord, Jesus. And then sabi ni Paul, For you receive the word, in much affliction, with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So, Paul is saying, kanil mga Thessalonians, when they received the gospel, they were being persecuted. Kasi remember at that time, diba sabi ko, that uh, Thessalonians worshipped 25 gods and goddesses. And then, they were preaching Jesus and dapat exclusive. That is why mga Thessalonians suko kayo. So why are you preaching this new God? na parang exclusive. No, they don't like it. That's why they were persecuting Christians. And the difference with the Christians is that ang Christianity, we have to live moral lives. Whereas itong mga Thessalonians, they worship itong mga gods and goddesses, uh, they don't have to live moral lives. In fact, some of the gods and goddesses that they worship were immoral. So okay lang immorality. 
Whereas Christians, malahi sila. They have to be uh, moral. They have to be pure. That is why they persecute sila. No, saan mo, lahi mo kayo. No? They were being persecuted. But yet, they received the word. Even with affliction, they continue to hang on their faith. And then, nasa joy sa Holy Spirit. Ito yung kanindot. You know, it's only the Holy Spirit that can give us joy. No matter our situation, especially kanin pandemic, you know, if you are a true Christian, you will find joy in the Lord. Kasi pag Christian ka and then depressed, uh, there's something wrong. No? There's something wrong because we Christians are supposed to have the fruit of the Spirit. And what are the fruit of the Spirit? Among them, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, etc. No? Faithfulness, gentleness. So, dapat na tay joy. Joy is different from happiness. Kasi happiness, you're happy with the situation. Ang joy, despite the difficulties, bisag unsa kalisod sa kinabuhi nato, malipayon ta because of the Lord. Okay? And then, um, verse 7, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaya. Busa, nahimo ka mong panig ingnan sa tanang mga tumutuo sa Macedonia o Akaya. In other words, because of how the Thessalonians handled the gospel, the word of God, they persevere in uh, suffering and then um, they were good examples to all the Christians in the province of Macedonia and Achaya. By the way, where is this Macedonia and Achaya? Kasi yung Greece at that time, there is a northern portion which is Macedonia, ang capital is Thessalonica, and then southern uh, Greece is uh, Achaya, the capital is Corinth. Corinth. That is where uh, Paul was writing the letter. No? So nandun sila, and these Thessalonians, they set a good example to Christians in the province. Imagine, ibig sabihin, they have exemplary lives. No? And Paul was thankful for their lives. And can, you, can we give example? Ano sa mga buhat ng mga Thessalonians? Uh, you can find example in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 2. Naingun dire, kanay mga uh, Thessalonians di ay, even though they were poor, they help out other Christians in other places. They send money, they send aid to other Christians. So makita ninyo ilang kasing-kasing, no? That they really love and care for other Christians despite the fact that they were having difficulties on their own, no? They were very generous. So, sabi ni Paul, this, ito tama, ito yung tamang uh, how Christians should live, okay? So, Paul is saying that you are setting a very good example of how uh, to be a Christian. You know, how we spend our money also reflect our true spirituality. Kasi it reflects na natin pagtuo sa ginoo, no? That He can provide for our need. So, that's why, no, we help our brothers and sisters, we give to the church, tithe and offering, because of that, no? Because we believe that the Lord is going to supply all our needs. Okay, kailangan ng faith. So makita na to, no? The response of the Thessalonians to the gospel was very, very good. That's why, di ba? Timothy uh, sent a good report to Paul, two thumbs up, no? Very good ang mga Thessalonians. And, yun nga, Gibutang ni Paul sa iyang letter itong thanksgiving niya because of the life of the Thessalonians. Okay, let's go to verse 8. For not only has the word of the Lord sounded forth from you in Macedonia and Achaya, but your faith in God has gone forth everywhere so that we need not say anything. So, ganun kagrabe yung good example ng mga Thessalonians that hindi lang sa Macedonia and, and Achaya, it reaches to the other parts of the globe, such as Philippi, Corinth, Berea, Athens. So makita ninyo, wow, very good ang example ng mga Thessalonians. You know, we can learn from the examples of the Thessalonians. You know, the best way to share the gospel is through our personal testimony. Because no matter how we share the Word of God, but if people do not see um, Christ in our life, they will not be attracted to us. They will say, ah, tama na kastorya. No? And in fact, a lot of atheists, 
became atheists because of Christians. <laughs> Unfortunately, because they see the life of these so-called Christians and they say, oh, you're a hypocrite. I don't want to have anything to do with Christianity. That is why, brothers and sisters, it's important. Look at our personal lives. We have to follow, just like the Thessalonians, dapat inana ta. No? I, I, in fact, this is my prayer for this church, no? that DCF will become model Christians. No? Our church will become a model church no? to, throughout the province of Sambuanga del Norte and hopefully throughout the Philippines. No? Why not? No? We, so we live this life, no? this uh, life of integrity, work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness in hope. You know, a recent survey says that uh, around 70 to 80 new converts to the church are usually from friends, family members. Because I believe it's not uh, effective, no? Now we go, let's say I send two by two, okay, ato mo sa mabalay, mag-preach mo, mag mo. For me, it's not effective. The most effective way to share the gospel is where you are. So if you live in a family, na hindi Christian ang iyong parents, your brothers and sisters, start with that, no? With your life, no? Uh, live a life in such a way that your family members will be attracted. Let's say in your mga office mates niyo. So, be a good Christian so that you can easily influence your fellow uh, workers, no? And if, mga students, mga classmates niyo, etc., neighbors, no? So what is important is our life, no? Our life because, you know, yung preaching of the gospel is not the sole responsibility of the pastor or the elders of the church. It is the responsibility of all of us. Kasi remember sa Great Commission, sabi na, go and make disciples of all the nations. Wala nag-iingon na, kamula mga leaders, you are the ones are supposed to go. But it should be everyone. But of course, there are techniques on how to share. So wag naman siguro makulit kayo na, Na, sige ka mangulit. So, no, that's not effective. And then, wag, ayaw makipag-away. Ha? Don't debate with other people because the best testimony is your life. If they will see lahigo ka, they will be attracted to Jesus because of you. Just like all the Christians in the province of Macedonia, they were attracted to the Thessalonians because they show work of faith, labor of love, and steadfastness of hope. Despite the persecution that they were facing, they were able to stand firm. So, yon. So that we do not have to say anything. So, sobrang grabe ang, uh, ang good reputation nila that Paul need not say anything because people already knew. The word spread about them. So, dapat sana inanapunta ang DCF na pag sinabi, ah, taga DCF ka, maayo kayo. Because uh, model, no? We can attract people to Jesus Christ. Okay, verse 9. For they themselves report concerning us the kind of perception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Kay sila na mismo ang nanugilon kung giunsa ninyo kami sa pag-atiman sa dihang mibisita kami diha kaninyo o gipa nugilon nila nga gisalikway ninyo ang inyong mga dios dios aron makaalagad kamo sa tinuod o buhi nga Dios. So other people were telling Paul what had happened after he preached in Thessalonica. So diba, Timothy brought a good news report and tanaghan mga tao nagsuti kay Paul, uy, maayo kayo ang mga believers sa Thessalonica. Remember, these are new converts. These are baby Christians, no? But they were showing real faith. You know, my brothers and sisters, it doesn't matter how long you have been a Christian. It's not the, the length of time. It's the quality of your work. So, bisan few months old palang ka as Christian, but if you really, you really practice the Word of God, you will grow in maturity. You will really grow up faster. No? So, this is very important. Kasi sa spiritual life, walay physical age. Lain yun, ha? So, we have to develop we have to grow mature. That should be our goal, no? to be mature. And thanks be to the Thessalonians, even though they are baby Christians, they are newly converts, but they really show yung what a real Christian should be. Okay? And then, isa pa, they turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. Remember I said that 
uh, the Thessalonians worship 25 gods and deities. And now, uh, most of them are idolaters, no? pagans. But they turned to God from these idols, and they were serving the living and true God. The word serve here, itong concept ng service, is just like a slave serving a master. Kasi during that time, merong slavery. And, and then that's why they consider Jesus as their Lord. Pag sinabi Lord, Master, Kyrios. So si Jesus ang ilang Lord, Master, they are slaves of Jesus. Dapat inana po ang atong pagtuo kang Jesus. No? We should be slave of Jesus. When we, said, when we say that we are slave of Christ, meaning we have to obey. A slave cannot say, uh, mamili ko unsay i-obey na ako, Master. Pero a slave should obey everything. That's why the concept of Christianity is that we are supposed to be slaves of Jesus Christ. No? We are serving the living and true God. And then, uh, in verse 10, last verse, and to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, Jesus who delivers us from the wrath to come. Gipa nugilon usab nila nga nagab hulat ka mo sa pagbalik sa iyang anak nga si Jesus gikan sa langit. Siya iyang gibanhaw gikan sa kamatayon ug mao ang nagaluwas kanato sa umaabot nga silot. Okay, the word wait here uh, in Greek is anamenu, to wait for. Itong wait, this is not a passive type of waiting. Meaning passive type of waiting, the Bible is not saying that, okay, you have to uh, relax, magtunganga mo, waiting for Jesus Christ to come. That is not the meaning of the word. The word wait uh, here is used in the active sense. We should be actively waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning, while we are waiting, we are continuing with our life. We are continuing to share the gospel of Christ. So yun ang point ni Paul. No? We have to wait for the coming of the Lord. Like I said, atong Thessalonians speak more about end times, no? Uh, compared to other books, no? A bulk of the letters talks about the issues about the second coming of Jesus. And then, as uh, ni Paul, we have to wait. We have to wait for His Son. Jesus is the Son of God from heaven. Bucket from heaven. Kasi remember, uh, Jesus ascended to heaven. And then, sabi ng mga angels, in the same way, Jesus will come again. Sa langit sa munaog. So, Jesus will come back from he heaven. And Jesus is the Son of God who God raised from the dead. Itong resurrection of Jesus is very important. Because without the resurrection of Jesus, Christianity crumbles. And the resurrection of Jesus is a proven historical fact. Okay, um... There are lots of witnesses who saw Jesus alive for the next 40 days, I think. after Yes, 40 days after He resurrected, a number of people saw Him. And Jesus promised that He will come back to take us home. And this is the hope that the Thessalonians hung on for. No? They were waiting for Jesus to come back to do what? To deliver us from the wrath to come. Okay, deliver or to rescue. Wrath to come. What is this wrath to come? Ang wrath is suko sa ginoo. Uh, sa silot. So, unsa may silot? Because remember, God is a holy God. no? God is a holy God. And then, because of sin, we are supposed to go to hell. The wrath to come is the last day. On the last day, uh, on the day of judgment, God is going to judge the living and the dead. Mga patay na, they will raise again to be judged. And the rule is, tanan tan, suppose that we will go to hell. But thanks be to God, because of Jesus Christ, we have salvation. And all we have to do is to trust in Jesus Christ, His Son. Diba, kanindot, diba, ang grasya sa ginoo? Supposedly, we are supposed to die. Because of His grace, He sent His only begotten Son so that whoever believes in Him, whoever trusts in Him, will have eternal life. And that salvation is a free gift of God. 
It's a free gift, my brothers and sisters. Dapat, we should not reject God's gift. So, today, if you hear the word of the Lord, do not harden your heart because the gift of salvation is free. It's by God's grace. Dawato na to. Dawato na to. And not only that, okay, from this letter to the Thessalonians, we learn that our faith should show by our works. Dapat, our faith should produce good works and then we should love our neighbors as ourselves and then we should have that steadfastness of hope. Okay? The, rep- the Thessalonians have good reputations. They, have, they live exemplary lives. This is the challenge for DCF this morning. We should be like the Thessalonians. We should live exemplary lives. Muingunta natay pagtuo. Dapat makita sa atong kinabuhi. We have to repent from our sins. We have to turn away from our sins. We have to become model Christians. You know, before I was hoping, no, when I became pastor in this church, I, I was hoping that we will grow in number. But the Lord has changed, over the years have changed my heart. I realized it's not the quantity of members that is important, but the quality. And I think that is what we're going to aim for. Aim for quality. That we may be like the Thessalonians. That the whole city of Dipolog, Sambuanga del Norte, even the Philippines, kung pwede, to look up katong mga Christians from Dipolog Christian Fellowship. Baayo kayo. Dapat tularan. No? That we may serve as a encouragement to all Christians around the world. Especially so that our church carries the word Dipolog. Dipolog Christians Fellowship. Yung name ng atong church, very generic. No? So ima- just imagine if out of our members, daghan mga immoral or murderers that continue to kill or continue to commit immorality. Anong sasabihin ng tao? Ah, itong mga Dipolog Christians? Ah, kuhan na siya. Mga bugoy na siya. Mga ganon. No? Hinaot na dili. Good, no? And this is my prayer, no? That our church will have more, mat- that all of us will become mature in Jesus. That when we, they see, ah, pag dipolog na Christian, kwan, okay kay na. And through, our, through our example. No? This is my prayer, church. Just like ano, Paul, no? just like the Thessalonians, it's my prayer that one day when we meet the Lord, He may tell us, you good and faithful servant. Alam mo, kanag yun na pinakanindot na madunggan na to, no? You good and faithful servant. So that is the challenge for this morning church. How we live our lives. That we may set an example for all believers. That eventually, we may draw people, not to ourselves, huh? uh, correct me, uh, please don't misquote me. We will become examples that we will turn people to Jesus Christ. Eventually, tanan, mato kay Jesus. No? Kita, gigamit lang ta as instrument. So that is our prayer, church. Whether in our family, in our church, in our workplace, in our neighborhood, may we become like the Thessalonians, a good model to other people, to attract people to Jesus Christ. So can we all please end in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for your message this morning, O God. Thank you, Lord, for the encouragement and for the exhortation that you have given us through the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. May we be more uh, like you, Lord, most importantly. Kung nakayanan mga Thessalonians, makayanan po namo, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that all of our members will practice our faith, that people will see that we are really children of God by our good deeds. And it's also a prayer, Lord God, that we will have that labor of love, that among higugmaon ang mga among isig katao, Lord, that we will love our neighbors as ourselves, that people will see Jesus in us, O God. And at the same time, Lord, especially during this pandemic, O God, that we will have this steadfastness of hope. Especially now that a lot of people are depressed, Lord, are parang don't know what to do, Lord God, that through our life and example that
people will be encouraged, Lord God, that life on earth is only temporary, O oh God, that you are coming soon, that you are our blessed hope, O oh God. And among ipanalangin, Lord, na kaning among paglaum, Lord, makalat na sa luban tao, Lord, that that we may be able to bring people to you, not because we are good, Lord God, but because by your grace, you have transformed us to be more like you. And it's our prayer, O oh God, help us to grow in maturity, O oh God. Kasi kani ay mong kagustuhan, Lord, na mahimo kaming matarong, Lord, mahimo kaming uh, mature, Lord God, and that we may become effective witness of Jesus Christ. That is our desire this morning, O oh God. And it is our prayer, O oh Lord, that you will make us all grow up, Lord God. Grow up in faith. Thank you, Jesus. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Salamat. Amen.